It's May 11th, 2020, and welcome to the How to Grow Your Business podcast brought to you by D-Business Magazine and Startup Nation. This week, we interview Cindy Paskey, CEO and founder of Strategic Staffing Solutions in Detroit, and David Johnson, chairman of Victor International in Clarkston and developer of such residential and resort properties as Turtle Lake in Bloomfield Hills, Bay Harbor in Northern Michigan, and Oil Nut Bay in the Caribbean. Here's your host, R.J. King. Welcome, everyone. I'm your host, R.J. King, editor of D-Business Magazine, part of our media. Each week on the How to Grow Your Business podcast, we interview top business leaders and ask them, how do you grow your business? We also have our big three, our favorite stories for the week covering entrepreneurs and leaders who are forging into new markets, innovating products and services, and turning challenges into opportunities. A special thanks to our sponsor, the Van Buren Charter Township Downtown Development Authority, a great place to live, work, and play. Find out more about starting your new business in Van Buren Township at vanburen-mi.org. Also, thanks to Startup Nation Studio for providing and co-producing the How to Grow Your Business podcast. Birmingham-based StartupNation.com provides millions of users with the information, inspiration, and resources they need to start and grow a successful business. Learn more at StartupNation.com. Well, Detroit, the region, and Michigan have such a rich business ecosystem that inspired the launch of D-Business Magazine in 2006. Since then, we've added D-Business.com, D-Business Daily News, D-Business Tech and Mobility News, Detroit 500, Michigan Makers, and now our latest offering, the How to Grow Your Business podcast. Nowhere else will you find business leaders who are passionate about growing their revenue, empowering their employees, and bringing value to the community. Before we turn to some of our top stories, we've been getting a lot of great feedback about our May cover story, What Does the Future Hold?, which examines the top 10 industries in Michigan and what they'll look like going forward. Now, Michigan's top 10 industries are automotive, manufacturing, real estate, banking, healthcare, aerospace, logistics, agriculture, technology, and resorts and tourism. And coming up, we'll be talking with Cindy Paskey, founder and CEO of Strategic Staffing Solutions in Detroit. How will Cindy be growing her business? And David Johnson, developer of Turtle Lake and Bloomfield Hills and Bay Harbor in Northern Michigan, among other resort and commercial properties. We'll be talking to David about what's ahead in the real estate industry. Now let's take a look at the big three business stories from our newsroom. Trevco in Madison Heights launches Mask Club with 2,000 licensed designs, as well as providing charity donations. Trevco just launched Mask Club, which provides protective facial wear with licensed designs from brands like Batman, Betty Boop, Popeye, and Care Bears. Mask Club is believed to be the first company to offer a mask subscription model where customers receive a new mask every month. Quote, we want to help families make the situation a little better and hopefully brighter by featuring beloved brands that resonate with children and making the act of mask wearing less intimidating, says Trevor George, founder and CEO of Trevco. He started the company in 1990, and today they have 800-plus licensed brands from Warner Brothers, Hasbro, NBC Universal, and more. One of the largest e-commerce players for licensed merchandise, the company attributes its growth to its unique print-on-demand apparel and accessories technology. Pretty cool. Nick, what do you think? I think it's fantastic. As I sit here wearing my Star Wars mask. <laughs> yeah, I was noticing that. And then when I see you on um, Zoom for our conferences, you're in your Lego room. Talk about that Lego room. You oh, have. yeah. It's just like branding, branding, branding. Yeah. So, I mean, what a great opportunity to put a little, you know, billboard on your face. You know, you have that real estate now. Why not try it out? <laughs> also, shout out for a great name. I'm sitting here like, where'd that come from? Oh, it's literally Trevor Corporation. Yes, yes, yeah. <laughs> no, the, the, this uh, young man is uh, really doing an amazing thing. And to come up with an idea like that with everything else that's going on and then have the ability to do it, that is amazing. Uh, next, we have a great story from uh, Beaumont Hospital in Royal Oak. They are now starting to study the effects of common drugs on COVID-19. Researchers at Beaumont Hospital in Royal Oak have begun enrolling patients in a new clinical study aimed at treating COVID-19 with two common drugs, naltrexone and ketamine. 
the U.S. Food and Drug Administration's investigational new drug program granted Beaumont researchers permission to start the clinical study. Quote, there is an urgent need to develop new treatments for COVID-19 using easily available and affordable medications, says Dr. Matthew Sims, Director of Infectious Disease Research at Beaumont Health. Ideal new treatments for COVID-19 would help halt the progression of the disease in patients with mild cases prior to the need for ventilators and provide a rescue treatment for patients with severe cases of the virus. What do you think, Nick? I mean, this is such a huge way to give people confidence to go out, you know, getting those treatments, getting those vaccines. I mean, that's what's really, I think, going to inspire people. Uh, I'm curious what Cindy has to say in, you know, the next coming segment. But I feel like just getting this this inspiration for people to feel confident leaving their house again is really going to help empower the economy more. Yeah, I know one of Sunday's big accounts at Strategic Staffing Solutions is Blue Cross Blue Shield of Michigan. And of course, they've been right in the middle of this pandemic war, if you will. Yeah. OK, we're going to move on to the world of 3D printing. Very interesting story. Detroit's Maker OS, which has offices in the Motor City in New York, has launched Makers Against COVID, an on-demand distributed fabrication, and 3D printing network that can rapidly produce equipment to fight COVID-19 as well as other products. The company is open to any fabrication or 3D printing company to enlist their skills and equipment. The network is powered by Maker OS Overflow, an online supply and sales channel. With Makers Against COVID, Overflow will handle the logistics between request and production. Maker OS intended to beta launch Overflow later this year as a supply and sales channel for 3D printing, digital fabrication, and product development companies. It accelerated the launch in response to the pandemic and demand for equipment. Quote, we recognize that there is an immediate supply gap for emergency equipment where traditional and foreign fabrication companies are not nimble or lean enough to meet this demand, says Mike Mosheri, CEO and founder of MakerOS. We're able to help fill this gap, and that's why we beta-launched Overflow to power makers against COVID-19. Nick, you got to like how they just sped everything up here. Oh, absolutely. I mean, makers have been such a huge driving force for some of these supply gaps in the industry. Uh, you know, printing the mask stretchers, uh, printing ventilator parts, printing, uh, you know, plastic shields. Uh, it's been great to see the maker community really jump for this. Yeah, and the other thing is, is that you're seeing so many companies now adapting to COVID-19. We had this thing that we weren't really doing. Now we're going to bring it forward real quick. I think you're going to see more and more of that going forward. So those are some of our top stories of the week. You can find the full articles at deepbusiness.com or better yet, Visit our website and subscribe to D-Business Daily News to receive daily updates on local business stories. Don't go anywhere. Coming up, we have Cindy Paskey, founder and CEO of Strategic Staffing Solutions in Detroit. Now we'll be right back with a quick word from our sponsors. You are listening to the How to Grow Your Business podcast. Our new normal is now. The Van Buren Township Downtown Development Authority supports and celebrates the accomplishments of our business and residential communities before, during, and after COVID-19. As we adjust to our new normal, we would like to say thank you. Thank you to our community for their strength, courage, and sacrifice. Van Buren Township, where you need to be. Visit VanBurenDDA.com. Welcome back to the How to Grow Your Business podcast. I'm your host, RJ King, editor of D-Business Magazine and author of the book, Detroit Engine of America. Thanks for listening. I want to welcome Cindy Paskey, founder and CEO of Strategic Staffing Solutions in Detroit, one of the nation's top staffing companies. She's also the chair of the Downtown Detroit Partnership, and she and her husband, Paul, support numerous civic causes in the region. S3 even has their own float in the Thanksgiving Day Parade and sponsor the Turkey Trot. That's one of my favorite holidays. Cindy, how have you and Strategic Staffing Solutions doing? Well, thank you, RJ, and it's great to join you today. I appreciate the invitation. We're working really, really hard. We're doing well. S3 is fine. We were in a really good place prior to the start of the pandemic, and that's a good thing. Uh, we're keeping people to work. I think you know, there are 
there are no challenges that we can't meet. It is, you know, one of the things that we've always talked about is how exciting and interesting it is to have people in 14 or 15 countries around the world doing all types of work. And that certainly created a whole new set of um, challenges and obstacles, most of which we've dealt with and overcome. But there's a lot of different rules, regulations, openings, closings. But overall, we're, um, we're doing just fine. Well, that's great to hear. Cindy, the last time I saw you was at the Detroit Athletic Club, and you were coming off your annual meeting in which you bring in all of your senior executives around the world for a two-day conference. Being so in tune with your team is incredibly efficient. Um, how important was that foundation of effective communication during the COVID-19 pandemic? You know, that's a really good question. Um, and you know us really well, RJ. We are, we're always on planes, right? Because we want to be with our teams, with our customers and consultants. Um, and January kicks that process off. It really has, I have no doubt, let us work through this quickly, efficiently with plans our ability to be as connected as we are all around the world, to look forward to communicating to each other. We always were multiple phone calls every single day anyway. Our last choice of communication, as you well know, was an email. And so it's, it's really played an important role in us being able to do what we need to do to move forward, to keep our people working, to look after our team, and to find a way to continue to support our communities. You have a business model. It's such that you work with, you know, basically 20 top companies rather than many small accounts. And some of your clients include DTE Energy and Blue Cross Blue Shield of Michigan. How have you adapted to this new normal working with these companies? It, it seems to me that having these large companies to work with, you know, you got to navigate all of their different departments. But at the same time, you're also, uh, you know, these people intimately. So I think that would be much more efficient way to do it for you. Thank you. It is more efficient. You know, the, the one thing that, you know, we can say about S3 is 98% of our revenue last year came from what is considered an essential business. And of course, we're considered an essential business. So out of the gate, we were positioned to find ways to be good partners, bring value and be part of the solution. And, and you're right, it's, um, you know, I talked in the previous question, it was like, we have to understand what's happening in each city, state, country, county that we're doing business with. It's the exact same thing for our customers. Now, to your point, having served these customers for years, in some instances, a couple, 30 years, and the relationship that we have, it's really made it much more doable for us to understand what they need, move quickly, and in some instances, I actually come back to them and say, have you thought about this or we could do this for you? So those relationships, the depth of knowledge that we have of our customers really has allowed us to make a difference for them, be responsive and be part of the solution. Well, that's great. And, you know, going forward, how do you plan to grow your business after this reset? Are you seeing new opportunities that have sprung up in the last few months? Um, we, you know, thank you. We are seeing new opportunities. I mean, you know, we've always felt that, you know, the easiest sale is the one you've already made, right? So we're really focusing on our existing customers, where we can be a difference for them, where we can be an answer. Um, for some customers, we brought in a service line in the last few months of something that we hadn't done before from a, from a skill standpoint. And then for other customers, they've reached out to us. Moody's is a really good example in Lithuania to say, initially we thought you were just going to help us find talent. We now need you to be our talent and to structure it in such a way that it's not on site that you get the work done. And so we'll continue to, to focus on that, keeping in mind that our number one priority is always to serve the customer base that we have, find ways to bring them value and remove barriers and be willing to move really quickly. You know, we have, a, we have one customer that says, we've never procured health care from you, but uh, we need 30 nurses. Can you do that now? And we said, yes, we can do that now. And we did. So the other, the other thing that we're, I think, exceptional at is we can move in two days. Um, and a lot of time, our competition, it's two months or, and a lot of rules and regulations. And we just, if, if our customers need it, we find a way to get it done. And that's how we'll grow. Well, that's great. I mean, you're literally standing right there with the people right on the front lines dealing with the COVID-19 every day. 
Putting on your other hat, Cindy, what does uh, the future hold for downtown Detroit? What's that looking like? The parks and everything that you, uh, the partnership does a great job of uh, maintaining and, and enhancing. Well, thank you. Um, first, I think, you know, we're just so fortunate to have Mayor Duggan. You know, we did a word cloud for the mayor right now. It would be tenacity, leadership, um, determination, passion, caring. It's just, if you look around the what's going on in the world and you look at we, where we are with Mayor Duggan and it's we're just so fortunate. Um, not surprising if you've known him, but fortunate. And I think, you know, Eric and the team at DDP have done a phenomenal job. The board's been all in. You know, everyone's paid their dues. We all paid our dues early. We're running within our budget in a transparent way. As you know, that's always been our goal and objective. Um, our biz ambassadors are doing a good job. And what I think you'll see is we'll we'll do some creative things that are appropriate. You know, in, in Lithuania, they've closed traffic in a lot of the old towns so that restaurants can move their seating. So then instead of asking a restaurateur to figure out a way to wake at work on 25%, they now have room for 100% and social distancing. We're talking with the folks at Park to see if we could pilot a similar concept in Campus Martius where part of that area becomes seating for them so they have more capacity and they stay within social distancing. We've already added more hand washing stations. Um, we're getting ready to roll out the kiosk program and, and now I think a lot of the messaging on there will, uh, will support what people need to do in order to social distance, how to get help, where to go. Something that a lot of people don't know is when they were setting up the special shelters for the homeless, Eric and the team, and Eric made personal deliveries in the team, we helped supply with funding that was provided all of the materials really in, in six days for the shelters. So not unlike S3, DDP has said, where should we be um, to make our difference in our city now? And then we can come back and figure out how we can be the DDP that most people think of. But in the meantime, everything's clean, flowers are planted, the ambassadors are out there, the garbage is being picked up, the hand washing stations are there. We had a great board meeting um, last week, so we'll be there and we'll be all the things you should, thought we should be and then um, we'll pivot as quickly as we can to be what the city needs. Well, thank you so much, Cindy. That's been very encouraging to hear. I uh, wish you a, a great day and uh, all the best to uh, Strategic Staffing Solutions. Thank you, RJ. I really appreciate being able to see you via technology this morning and your interest in S3 and all your support. And uh, you take care as well. Okay, thank you. Bye-bye. Coming up, David Johnson, developer of Turtle Lake and Bloomfield Hills and Bay Harbor in Northern Michigan, among other resort and commercial properties. We'll be talking to David about what's ahead in the real estate industry. Strategically located between Ann Arbor and Detroit, Van Buren Township offers unique business opportunities for major technical hubs and thriving startups. A premier community, Van Buren Township prides itself on deliberate growth. The DDA's tradition of sound community Master planning has put Van Buren Township in the perfect position to take advantage of future economic growth and emphasis on technology on a global scale. Van Buren Township. Business, pure and simple. Visit VanBurenDDA.com. Welcome back. David, thanks for joining us on the How to Grow Your Business podcast. I know you're calling from South Fox Island, which is in northern Michigan, and I know you have uh, 18 horses up there, and I we just did a story on you in the March-April issue of Deep Business on a beautiful piece of property and development that you did called Oil Nut Bay on a breathtaking stretch of uh, on the island of the Virgin Gorda. So how's the weather up there in South Fox Island? Well, it's a lot chillier than, uh, than Oil Nut Bay in the British Virgin Islands, which is at 82. So we had a little ice on the horse waters last night, um, but it's beautiful and uh, summer is uh, upon us, and we look forward to working with the governor and the uh, restrictive covenants getting relaxed and wisely growing our business. Okay, great. Well, you know, I've watched your career for a long time, and, you know, you, you've had such amazing success, and, you know, it was the start in the oil and gas business and up to real estate development and, and so many other enterprises in between. What growth strategies have you learned along the way? Well, the number one uh, growth strategy is, uh, I believe in having an outstanding team that I have to have uh, 
determination and unwavering commitment to always moving forward, no matter what the conditions are, whether it's hurricanes or COVID virus uh, or uh, you know 9/11 or uh, global economic chaos, you have to rethink your business and continue to move forward. My father was born in 1898. Um, and taught me that change is the only consistent in life and you got to lead change. That's great. And, you know, we're talking about the COVID-19 thing, but it's amazing to me that you survived, I think it was Hurricane Irma, right? Correct. Uh, in, at Oil Nut Bay in the Caribbean. Just sort of describe what's going on at Oil Nut Bay and, and how you guys got through that hurricane. So we went through the hurricane, uh, which was effectively a Category 7, uh, five hours of 235 mile an hour winds. And what we realized quickly was while we physically looked destroyed, we had no structural damage. And rather than wait for insurance companies uh, or proceeds, I decided to build it back together. And we had an unbelievable group of owners. Um, we communicated with them and we took care of the neighborhood. Uh, we built a new school in Virgin Garda for the public and provided food and resources to the workforce and immediately rebuild it versus waiting for insurance. Now you've come and, and, and we decided then to take it another generation ahead and build new features, built a Marina Village, built two new restaurants, finished all the infrastructure, invested another 30 million of cash uh, to take it to the next level, exceeded our owner's expectations and brought in global purchasers. Um, and the lots go from two to, 25 million. Um, so it's a thin air market for the world's most successful people, but it is a because you can marketplace that gets the world's most successful people and is safe and beautiful and usable. Now we have COVID-19 upon us. It's a completely different threat in that what we did in our hurricane was open to the public in 90 days. Now the borders are closed. Business is closed. Uh, we have no open restaurants. We have no open uh, guests. And we have, in fact, still, there's no unemployment in the BDI. But to keep our amazing team together, we've decided to subsidize them and bring them back and um, pay them through this uh, pandemic so that they're ready when and the borders do open back up, which we figure, you know, they might in 90 days, but to get in full swing, it'll be November. Oh, that's great. And, and closer to home, I think a lot of people know of your uh, successful residential development near Square Lake and Telegraph and uh, Bloomfield Hills. Turtle Lake, how's that project going? So Turtle Lake is great, and um, we, we still manage it, uh, even though we're sold out, and mentor it and uh, oversee it. We finally, after 20 years, have gotten it through um protecting the homeowners market values uh, it's a gated community it's a truly a gated community and has an amazing group of owners with a lot of construction going on there um so you know construction now being opened back up there in the northern michigan is an important part of regaining momentum okay great and, and what do you foresee for the road ahead for real estate i mean you've got you know, the main markets, residential, retail, office, which are also active in uh, industrial and, of course, hospitality. Um, wh what do you see for the road ahead there? So this is completely different than 2008, 2009, 2010, where we had not only a global economic crisis, but, you know, who could have ever imagined that General Motors, Chrysler and City of Detroit would go bankrupt all at the same time? And residential values dropped from 50 to 70 percent uh, throughout Oakland County, um, and we were able to manage uh, them in Bay Harbor in northern Michigan, where we only went down about 30 percent and are back to all-time high, where we never recovered to all-time high in Oakland County. Here, you have a completely different scenario. I think we've had a health crisis this is not an economic crisis and the health crisis stopped the economy 
which was January and February, and I'm a, uh, through Urban Land Institute, which as you know, I just won the Lifetime Achievement Award, but I'm very active in the United States in uh, ULI. And January and February throughout the country were the biggest two months in the history of sales of single family residential in the country. Um, and what's interesting, um, I'm, a, I'm on a group of the 30 largest master plan community uh, developers that meet once every 30 days. And we just finished last week our third 30 day meeting and they're back up to within 10% in the last two weeks of sales after being crushed in early April. So, I think that this is a matter of opening back up wisely um, and bringing jobs back, which I think jobs will recover uh, faster. But I do think that we accelerated uh, technology and we're gone 10 years ahead of where trends were going. Amazon is no longer a retailer, it's a utility. And um, the way that people are buying, the way that they're shopping, the way that they're going to the grocery store, home delivery, takeout, those are permanent lifestyle changes. Well, that's great to hear. And I guess moving forward, how do you plan to grow your businesses? So I think that, you know, we always look for where the trends are going and what the changes are and to realize uh, that each um, seismic event, and this is a seismic event, the, that we'll look back for all of our lifetime, our children's lifetime, will remember where they were, um, what took place when this happened, and we want to be ahead of everybody else in figuring out what it means. Certainly, putting a home office back in your house is a small but important trend in designing spec homes uh, from a single family standpoint. Uh, having the greatest amount of bandwidth and technology available uh, to homes so that they can take advantage of all the aspects of technology is critical and essential um, for our vacation properties you know giving people the ability to work from where they're uh, living and enjoying in a different safe place i mean the world is different and everybody wants to know they're going to be safe first and that you're doing everything that you can to provide a clean, thoughtful, managed um, uh, experience. And obviously, clearly taking care of our team. Uh, my employees are my family and taking care of them so they can take care of everybody else. We just provided a fund, raised a fund from our owners called North, in our North Sound Foundation that will supplement um, team members that need help getting through this, as well as other people that are less fortunate and unemployed. Well, David, thanks so much, and congratulations on being nominated and, and now being awarded the uh, Urban Land Institute Lifetime Achievement Award. I hope you have a great day and all the best success to you and, and hope to see you soon. Well, thanks for all the years, RJ, and, and my uh, advice to everybody is Keep moving one day at a time, one step at a time, and find your way forward and focus on the future. Great. Thank you so much. Well, that's a wrap. You've been listening to the How to Grow Your Business podcast, brought to you by Deep Business Magazine and Startup Nation. Visit us at all of our properties, Deep Business Magazine, Deep Business Daily News, Deep Business Tech and Mobility News, Detroit 500, and Michigan Makers. There's also my award-winning book, Detroit Engine of America, which chronicles for the first time how the city grew to become the automotive capital of the world. We record every week at the beautiful Startup Nation studio. Thank you to our sponsor, Van Buren Township. I'm your host, RJ King. Join us every Monday for business growth strategies from Metro Detroit's top business leaders. Until next time, stay safe and never stop dreaming.